Okay, what we have here today is a triangle tube. Prestige 110 boiler water heater. I'm not sure what they call these, but we got the E29 air warning. Yeah. That's the cover. I already removed this. I've already done my troubleshooting. But this is what I'm experiencing. That is the blower motor. And you can hear it. And there you go. So after about two minutes, it will shut itself down. Now here's the problem. None of the contractors that I have contacted here in Park City, Utah, are taking on new customers. I've never needed a heating contractor since I've lived here for seven years. So I'm going to replace this myself. This should be an easy job i've already done my homework uh this piece here just slips on this is a venturi redeflector inside here as you get my flashlight on there one screw there one screw there the gas piping uh, loosens up comes off right there and then there are four one Two, and the other two are accessed after you remove the top plate of this. So it should be pretty easy. And you got one electrical plug and another electrical plug back there. Two gaskets. Should be about an hour install at the most. Now remember, I'm a master electrician and this is seriously easier than installing a ceiling fan if you've never done a ceiling fan it's still going to be easier six screws and two plugs and a little tight area to work around so i ordered this part from ferguson i also got i noticed this back here this is your low water cutoff switch and it's like corroding there so I ordered another one of those just to have on hand because when you get emergencies it's an emergency well, it's in the 30s outside in Park City and I've got no heat and with no heat I've got no hot water and I've got no heating to any of my electrical to my radiant floor heating I just went and turned it off because the pumps would just keep running and circulating cold water. Anyways, uh, the parts should be here tomorrow. But stay tuned because even after I change this out, I'm going di to dissect the motor and show you what the design problems, besides being plastic bullshit, uh, is the issue. Okay, so uh, the uh, based on the serial number, this thing was built in 12. I think it was installed in 13. Now for replacing this online, there are some PDFs and I'm assuming uh, the printout of it will actually come with the new blower motor assembly uh, with step-by-step -step instructions on how to change this out. Should be pretty easy, but uh, I'll put a link in the description for the PDF in case you wanna uh, do your homework before attempting this yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and Take off this top cover, fill up screwdrivers, make sure you got a little magnet dually to uh, help you save and protect the screws. Nothing fancy here, this is a regular old six inch number two Phillips screwdriver. Yeah. 
and of course a longer or shorter one would work fine too. takes off the top all right so the new part is here and one thing I'm a little concerned about is this right here this is the 120 volt power connector and this is the uh, controls for it I guess that's a ground load but the existing one that I've got does not have this. The wiring harness is up there right where it needs to be. So maybe it's an update that they've changed. The other thing I want to show you is, is the four flange bolts. So these are all easily accessible from above. But look at this room. Look at this one right here. So I'm thinking the only way to get to that is with this long screwdriver that they do supply you. They supply a Phillips and a Torx one. But I'm hoping that this will be able to... Oh, I did it a second ago. Okay, so this thing mounts like that. So I need to get a screw <laughs> from here all the way down like that. Through the plastic cover and everything and that's going to be difficult not impossible but difficult i'm really not expecting to be able to show you uh, much of anything really only because of uh how this is all put together and there's no room in there for my head to get in there so if there's something of importance, I will show you and point it out to you if there's something that's of concern or whatever. I'll make your install of doing this yourself easier. The Venturi tube. Gas is off, electric is off. the gas loose you got a little screw on this connector here that's I'm assuming is just a vibration proof connector okay that screw there is very loose on there is very loose. And on the top, and this right here. It should just come free like that. And you will be reused and you'll go on the new thing that plug on top and there's the 120 volt thing so now it should just be four screws that torques Healy. that's not very tight either so it's good to know that these things don't have to be cranked down super tight there's your first one god that's very that's like only finger tight at best. And I can even see where it's broken. There's a little piece of plastic floating around in there. Okay. I'm using my long magnet thing to get that screw out. And secured. Oh, one more feel for it. There's really not much.
much there for me to feel. But I know about where it is. I'm close. I'm in. I'm unscrewing it. Okay, that's loose, and that is out, and I think I'm going to have to go back the same way, so here's what I'm doing, can you see that right there, I'm going to start that before I put it up there, and drop it in the same way I just took it out, so the good news is the gaskets are all left on the old part. So there's nothing to scrape or take off. And this took me all of nine minutes to remove. Okay, the same way that I took it off, I've already got my screw started on here and up, so now it's just a matter of manipulating this with everything into its proper place. Up, over, and down, and I'm in the hole. It's in the hole! I'll put a little more tight on these because it may have vibrated loose or one more, and then we'll put a little more tight on these. Yeah. I see ya. I dropped ya. As I kind of expected. And then the hole. I'm threading. I'm tight. I'm in. And that's tight. All right, so let's plug these plugs in, and I'm going to go ahead and plug in that 110 volt one that they're saying that I need. And there's no slack on it, bitch. One more. That's going to give me the slack that I'm going to need. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a small tie wrap. There's a little bit neat. They're not hanging and dragging in places. I think that's it for the top. Four more screws on that thing on the front. And then I guess, and we're done. What am I saying? Two screws. It's it's only two screws. That goes like that. That goes like that. First screw. Second screw. Okay, so I know you're going to be asking about that gas fitting. Why there's no pipe dope or something on there. But, uh, there's, if you look inside of the fitting, there's a rubber gasket. We will check the gas for leaks. Next is the Venturi. 
that just pushes on. Always one wire you forget, right? <laughs> Bitch. Okay, let's get all of our shit out of here. Gas on. I think that's good. Let's turn electric on. I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear that fan starting up. It's warm. It's warming up. I think I'm good. I think I'm good enough to uh, try to put the cover on back on the roof. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the gradient floor heat. I see all the zones. Calling for heat. All right, so this is what I want to see rising. That's at 70 degrees. That's at 60 on the return. But I'm pretty sure like this is where I want to be. Okay, I'm a little OCD. And because of that, and, and I got a good memory, but it's short. Time flies, right? So here's what I do. I make labels for shit. Lower motor replaced. Grandfather's motor replaced. Tom flies. I forget shit. And oh, look at that. Already. It's getting up to 80 degrees there. And on the return, it's at 60. All right, man. I went upstairs, opened up one of the faucets. I felt warm water coming out. That's my line out from the tank. And it's warm. Not the same warm as I got upstairs. So I'm going to let this thing heat up. This thing is working. It's getting warmer. Now it's going to take a little while. But I think I'm comfortable cleaning up. Okay, where's my screws? There's my screws. Now let's get in here and let's look at this broken plastic wheel. The blade would appear that it's broke along those ribs, but what would it take? How hard would it be to replace that wheel?
Okay, here's the problem. There's heat in here. This is like exhausting the heat. So the heat from the boiler cooks this plastic wheel. That's the design problem. That's the design fault. The other fault is that they don't put a little set screw on here that would allow you to pull this off and replace it with another $25 part. Sure, you'd have an hour of labor involved to get this off of the boiler and onto a bench so you can pull this off. But that's the problem. So you know what I say? Those of y'all that watched my videos before, you know. Triangle tube, you suck. You're under-engineering your products. Look how brittle that bitch is. Oh well. It is what it is. Triangle tube, you suck. $280 plus an hour or so of my time, which is cheap compared to your plumbers or heating guy. All right, man, that's it. Hope this helped you. If it did, you know what to do. Thumbs up. Subscribe, leave a comment, ask a question, and I'll answer it if I know the answer. See ya.